Here we go, here we go. Can I taste your juice? Hey folks, P. Bissardo, what's going on? Um, welcome. What are we reviewing tonight? Nothing. We'll get back to the reviews eventually, I promise you that. Um, but tonight, what are we going to do? We actually have a few different things to do, and I think if you stick around, you might find some of this uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about VCC Tulsa, because you guys know I don't really get a chance to cover the events like I used to anymore. Um... We are going to add to the stocking. Then we are going to add to the stocking again. All right. We are going to find out who won the last contest. We are going to kick off a new contest. And like I said, some uh, some things might be interesting uh, to you in this video uh, because we're going to talk about uh, this guy here a little bit right there, the, uh, the Vapor Flask SX. See, look at that. No DNA in this one. A, uh, an SX uh, 350J or a modified version of that in this one right here, okay? So we're going to find out uh, a little bit about that. Um, what else are we going to do? We're going to add to the stocking. So I already said that. So uh, let's start that off because we're going to add to the stocking again later on. So let me do some additions here. Um, I've got a, um, a Tesla Nano 100-watt temperature control, little temperature control device there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put that in. Uh, I am going to add a, uh, a Coil Master rebuilding kit, okay? And this is the version 1, but it's still a good kit. I'm sure you'll still find it pretty helpful. And if I'm going to put that in there, we should probably give you guys something to rebuild too, right? So I have the um, Aroma Miser uh, line here from Steam Crave. I've got the uh, RDTA. I've got the um, the RDA, the hexagon version, and then I've got the RDA, the round version. Okay, so all of this going into the stocking right now. Give me a minute to do that. All right, now before we get to the uh, the VCC Tulsa event, I want to give a shout out to uh, an e-liquid. This this e-liquid right here, uh, I tried for the first time when I was in the UK, and it was in kind of a, a testing mode. They didn't have final packaging or anything, and I, I really liked it, folks. Um, this one is extremely unique, unlike anything that I have tasted out there before. Uh, it's called White Cake by Pulp. Okay, and uh, this is made in the UK. It's from their cult line, White Cake. Now, what does this stuff taste like? It's, you know, I, I, I've heard a comment today that it tastes like buttered mashed potatoes. Uh, to me, when I smell, especially like when I smell the aroma of, uh, of the drip tip because the vapor's coming through, when I smell the, the output of the vapor, when I, when I taste this stuff, it reminds me of my mother's butter cookies. My, Chris, my mother's Christmas butter cookies. It reminds me of that, okay? Um, like, I don't know if I would be able to taste this and say it tastes like white cake. Um, but uh, it's, man, it's really good. Um, the thing that scared me about this e-liquid is it's so damn buttery. It is so damn buttery. And we know what, you know, butter could be, right? DI and AP. But they sent me their test results, and uh, according to their test results, the AP and the DI are like trace amounts, and it, they're not very high, okay? And I can go ahead and publish their um, uh, their test results along with this video. But uh, man, I, 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 it, I'm not sure if this is something that I could vape all day long, but I, I like crave it every now and then, and I have to pick it up, and I have to take a, um, a vape or two. Really good, really tasty, really unique. Um, pulp, white cake. Check that one out if you have the opportunity. Uh, that that's This is really unique stuff. All right, so a little bit about uh, VCC Tulsa. Uh, first of all, thank you to all the folks who came out, who said hello, who shook my hand, who gave me a warm welcome along with my wife. I really do appreciate that. Uh, everybody was super nice at the event. Um, the VCC events, in my opinion, have become some of the, the, the better events out there. They're not the craziest. They're not the loudest. Uh, you may not get the most free stuff uh, at these events, uh, but they are very, very well done. They're very, very well organized, run, um, and, and they're heavy, heavy in advocacy, too. Uh, I know he always puts, uh, Kevin, he uh, always puts together a, uh, an advocacy panel available to all of the, uh, the local vendors to come and talk to you. Uh, the night before the event, and th th they're really good. This is why um, I support them. This is why I go to them. So uh, thank you, Kevin, for running an excellent event. It, it, the attendance was a little light on this one. Okay, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, and not to mention there was a gun show. 
uh, like a massive gun show right across uh, our pavilion at, a, at another pavilion. And they like took up every single parking place. And you really don't want to argue over parking places because most of them were walking around with like rifles, shotguns, and handguns, right? So that would be a bad thing. But, you know, it was definitely heavy advocacy. It was definitely heavy um, anti-smoking, okay, getting smokers to quit, a lot of uh, free starter kits being given out. So that, that's all good stuff, okay? Sometimes that stuff is more important than just pure numbers. Uh, through the door. Uh, as a matter of fact, Kevin uh, put a little uh, blurb or a little video about the uh, the event, kind of a, a post-event wrap-up on uh, on his uh, Facebook page today. I took a bunch of stills. I didn't take, I see, I don't get a chance to take the stills when the people are there. So I took the stills uh, when, when there was nobody there. So it's going to look really light uh, from my stills, uh, but they are going to be up on Facebook. They're going to be up on tasterjuice.com uh, along with this video as well. Uh, as far as like, you know, did I see any really cool devices there was one device that that i took some photos of and i thought it was uh, pretty slick it was a it's a hybrid uh wood composite uh device okay and i think vape affliction had it it's called the osiris uh, i thought that was pretty sharp looking so i grabbed some photos and you know, that's pretty much uh all i did <laughs> i mean i did i did try a whole bunch of e-liquids um, but every e-liquid that i really liked did not come in a 12 so i didn't take any back with me so um i just Folks, I like 12. I mean, if I'm really gonna, if I'm really gonna enjoy an e-liquid, that's where I am. Okay, so that's what I kind of need. All right, so there's that. What else? Oh, of course. Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. It was good to see him again. My brother from another mother, the uh, the great pink Dimitri. <laughs> Yes, it was good to see my uh, my friend Dimitri again. It's too bad we uh, we all live so uh, far away from each other. Um, but uh, as a matter of fact, a, a while back on my Facebook page, I posted this photo of me and my little niece Lexi, and um, Dimitri was so jealous of that photo that I had to um, kind of do a little cuddling with him too. So uh, there's that. Um, Dimitri and I did do a talk up on the stage. Uh, it was a talk a little bit about the uh, the back to basics, kind of remembering where we came from, keeping the smokers in mind, not just marketing to um, to, to vapors, but but also inviting uh, smokers into and and you know just kind of having product available for them, having nicotine uh, levels available for them. Uh, for them to make an easier transition into uh, vaping. It was good to see Sean and the boys from Plumes of Hazard. They were there. JT was there. As a matter of fact, uh, JT with the, the sponsor of Smoker, I'm going to have him talk or do a little bit of a write-up so I can let you guys know what that program is because it's really cool. Uh, he actually took a bunch of starter kits and went over to the gun show and like found smokers and just started handing out kits and invited them over to uh, to the, the VCC convention. Uh, Suck My Mods was there. Matt was there. Uh, I finally met V. Um, and I called her Veronica at the bar the first night. It's, it's Vanessa, not Veronica. But I was drinking. Um, Ruby Roo was there. Uh, it just uh, Flitz. Um, and to everybody I'm not mentioning by name. It was just so good to see everybody. Uh, you know, again, I, I always, when I go to these things, you know, I've come to, to, to know these people. And I've come to call these people my, my friends. And then you, you come back home and you're, you're away until the, uh, the next meet. And it really is uh, kind of too bad. But uh, that's the way it is. Um, and then came the um, the after party. It was an after party for advocacy, okay? And um, this was, a, I really had a good time. From what I remember, uh, it was actually held at the hotel this time that I was staying at, uh, which made it much easier for me to uh, to crawl or get carried back to the, uh, to the room at the end of the night. So, um, you know, Kevin, um, I, I told the story a few times, but uh, the first time... He had this idea. He came up to me and he said, Phil, he goes, I got a great idea. This is the greatest idea ever. You're going to love this idea. What do you hear this idea? And I said, Kevin, what's the idea? And he said, you are going to DJ the after party. And I said, Kevin, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. I don't want anything to do with that idea. That's a really bad idea. And then he said, uh, but it's for a good cause. It's for tobacco harm reduction advocacy. So I said, okay, uh, I will do it. Um, for, for that cause, I will definitely do it. Um, and I, I thought this one was fantastic, okay? So, yes, I DJed the after party, um, and we got somewhere around $3,500 at, um, at the front door uh, for the event. Then, uh, I, and I will take full responsibility for this idea. I came up with the idea uh, to kick in 100 bucks of my own to have Dimitri twerk. 
Okay. Now, Dimitri refused to do said twerking uh, for the $100. He held out for $2,000. That's right. A $2,000 uh, twerk for tobacco harm reduction advocacy. And sure enough, we got the money and we got it really fast. Okay. So I have a little bit of video. Uh, all of the folks who um, donated the video for this cause, uh, I, I certainly do appreciate it. Uh, but before we take a look at uh, that video and we um, analyze and perhaps even review uh, Dimitri's twerking, um, please allow me to put this disclaimer on the screen. Uh, don't worry, uh, I, I do have some more video, but let's analyze this piece a little bit here. Let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, here we see some of that twerking action. Uh, I don't think he's quite as extended as he could be, uh, but not too bad. I do have uh, some additional angles here for you. Oh my God! Oh my God! Look at this! Wow! Why shouldn't that be the other way around? I'm just saying. Kind of an interesting, um, like a like a like a role reversal, like a role reversal uh, twerk there with the uh, lovely Courtney. Uh, let's take a closer look at that. Not too bad here. Uh, pretty decent form, uh, decent angle of attack. Uh, not too bad. A, a good effort. Now a little bit of a better quality view here of the uh, the first clip. Uh, Dimitri being helped out by uh, V, aka Vanessa, not Veronica, of uh, Matt and V, suck my mods and V, and uh, the uh, lovely Ruby. Uh, here we go. Okay, so uh, there you go. Obviously, the uh, the Greek man has some moves there, okay? Um, now, what would I give that? What would I give that? I'm going to give it a hesitant thumbs up. A hesitant thumbs up. Um, is it a uh, $2,000 worthy twerk? Uh, I'm going to leave that up for uh, you to decide. But we may we may need to uh, re-twerk uh, come the, uh, the Tampa event, which is next for VCC. And of course... Uh, I thank Dimitri for being a good sport and for doing that for uh, tobacco harm reduction advocacy. So nice job, pal. Keep it going. 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 I am so sorry, everybody. I, I, I really am. Uh, the next day, uh, Kevin was approached by White Label, and um, they, I'm not sure if they didn't know the event was going on or if they weren't able to attend, but they matched what we made that night. And then the um, I, my wife and I were talking to a company called Vapor World Biz. They didn't know that that event was going on. They matched it. And then after we did a presentation on stage, Kurt from Cloud Chasers, I think, matched what they put in. It brought the total up to $25,000 for tobacco harm reduction. And I'm just thrilled with that. I'm so thrilled with that. Thank you, everybody who, who went to the event and who contributed. Uh, that's just terrific. Terrific stuff. All right, so that's a little bit about uh, VCC Tulsa. I want to talk to you a little bit about this product right here. I'm not going to do a full review on this one just yet. I just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, this is going to be the new uh, vapor flask, okay? And this one's going to use the, uh, the SX chip. And, uh, you know, I have a funny story about when I met this guy for the first time, uh, Charlie. Charlie is his name. He's the guy behind uh, Vapor Flask. And I was at a, um, I was at a meet. And I was talking to somebody because they were asking me questions about the flask that I was using. And I said, yeah, I said, um, you know, it, it's, it's a great product. And then I started talking about the owner of the company. And I was saying, you know, the owner, he's, um, you know, he's like really meticulous about, you know, the things that he does. And he's, he's always, you know, calling you and asking you questions, answering your questions. Um, well, it turns out that as I'm talking about the owner of Vapor Flask, who I've never actually officially met at that point, um, there was a guy standing next to the guy I was talking to, and when I got done talking to the first guy, I turned to the next guy, I said, hey, Phil Basardo, and he says, hey, Charlie from Vapor Flask. <laughs> so, you never know uh, when the guy's going to show up. Like, from behind that door right there, ladies and gentlemen, Charlie from Vapor Flask. How you doing, bud? It's so good to see What's you. What's going on? Good to see you. Pull up a chair. Let's have a little chat. So, you said, you told me... That you were going to be in the area uh, doing some business, right? Absolutely. I'm going, to, I'm going to tilt this a little bit so we get your pretty head in there too. 
and uh, you wanted to come by and talk to me and introduce um, your, I don't know if you want to call it a new company, maybe it's a little bit of a new company, but new new products that you got coming out. And Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. what's going so, on, man? So people uh, people know us primarily for the uh, vapor flask, and I, I, I think that that I what people don't realize is that our, the the name of our company is Vapor Flask completely by accident. Um, we had set up another company called Vape Forward with that same um, you know VF theme, and and that was intended to be a more comprehensive vaping company. The Vapor Flask being the first product that we were um, that we were introducing, and then um, everything went really fast, and people just started referring to us as Vapor Flask, so we just went with it. And decided that uh, once we once we decided to actually move away from strictly the two battery vapor flask form factor at that point we could reintroduce the uh, vape forward concept and and the hope is you know three six months from now people think of VF and think vape forward the vapor flask just being one of the many props did you just get lucky that vapor flask happens to start with VF and vape forward happens to start with VF did it, was that just luck or um, was that planned? It, it, that, that, that was very much planned. Um, you know, we've, uh, if you look on all of our products, somewhere it has that VF logo on it. And uh, from an intellectual property standpoint, we'd actually protected the VF and uh, Vape Board at the exact same time we had protected Vapor Flask from a, cool. from a trademark standpoint. So let's talk about the history of the flask because the flask actually goes back to the first time that I visited Evolve, right? When I visited Evolve, they had this device, uh, Brandon had this device, hey, Phil, you got to check this out. It's really, really cool. And it was the Vapor Flask. And that's when um, Brandon put me in touch with you uh, to do the, the initial review. So how did the whole thing get started? I quit smoking about four years ago using vaping. Um, and it's, it's interesting that I'm sitting here uh, because most of my, my research on products was was through your reviews, Grim Green's reviews, <laughs> Terrific. And, and and here we are talking about the uh, the products that, that we're now manufacturing. Gr Grim who? Grim. Grim Green. Oh yeah, yeah, that, okay. Yeah. Tattoos. Of course, I'm kidding, right? Um, Joke. Let's so, have a toot. Yeah, Should we have a toot? Let's yeah, have, we'll a toot. have a toot. Let's have a toot on Grim's behalf. There we go. That's for you, Grim. Okay. And, so, uh, what was your first e-cig? My first e-cig was. Uh, the first e-cig that, that officially allowed me to quit smoking was the Smokeless Image Vault, uh, which was that yeah. 808, yep. that 808 connection, uh, and then quickly followed by uh, a Joytech Ego Twist, yep. and then from there an SVD mm -hmm. um, from Anakin, Anakin yeah. and and after that I got into uh, ENA20 box mods, um, had. Uh, a Hannah and then and then several other mods that uh, were were smaller batch devices and uh, and that was actually when when I decided that I wanted to look into getting into the vaping industry. Um, I think something that was particularly frustrating is that if you wanted something, if you wanted one of these box mods, you you had to go and put your name on a list. I called a handful of of these smaller modders out there and and, and asked if they'd be interested in um, in in partnering up with me and I could actually help them move away from, okay, we're going to take this month's pre-order list, fulfill the orders, and then take that and, and you know, open up the same list next month. How do you ever grow? How do you actually get your name out there? Right. Um, so, um, you know, I, I called, uh, it, it was it was two or three, it's hard to remember now, but it was two or three modders. None of them were interested. They were perfectly fine with the way that they were doing business. So um, so we looked at the, the, the market opportunity and said, okay, well, what is we don't just want to come out with another box mod what is what is this uh what is this space missing the box mod space and it was a, an ergonomically correct two battery dna 30 box mod at the time uh, so um they got together with a guy who I actually met uh on either in the forums or in a facebook group um my buddy ty from uh he was an engineering student at university of tennessee okay and we started throwing ideas around, and at one point we had a box that was uh, that was concave on both sides. So the thought was, well, if you put it in your pocket, it'll hug your leg, uh, regardless. And then um, I remember at one point, and it was actually funny because a couple of months ago I went back and looked at this Facebook conversation. I said, why don't we curve it, kind of like a flask, 
So then we went through five or six iterations from there, um, and eventually it started to look a lot like a flask. So we were like, "Screw it, let's just let's just make it a flask shape, and we'll, right. we'll call it the vapor flask." So the the design of the vapor flask, I mean, it, it was really designed for ergonomics one number two. It, it was designed to hug your leg in your pocket. Correct. It, the the design of this has nothing to do with your history of being a raging alcoholic. None of that. No, no, no. Now I have I have a business partner who's a raging alcoholic. Okay. But, uh, no, it had nothing to do with that. Okay. Um, now I, I do have to bust your balls a little bit. Now you say he says this is an ergonomic piece. Okay. Um, here, let me get you on camera a little bit more. There we go. Um, ergonomic for who? Why do you hate left-handed people so much? Well, I, but why don't we wait? Why don't we wait about ten minutes and, <laughs> and see if you're I still know. saying that? I know. Um, it, it's uh, what, what is it? I think ninety ninety-two percent of the population is right-handed. Yeah, but they're all doing it wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we went. We went with the ninety-two percent on that. Oh, I, I, I guess I could understand. Yeah. That. Yeah. So we got the uh, the vapor flask, and then we went to um, the vapor flask shark version. Correct. Right. Okay. And so now we have some new products coming out from you. Right. right? So, so we have, uh, we've spent the, we, we spent, we spent the first year of this company trying to perfect, to perfect, you know, first the DNA 30 and the DNA 40. Um, we made the, the transition to the SX and then we're working with, uh, with Vapor Shark so we can continue to offer both Evolve technology and then SX technology really to give customers the choice and also working with, um, Vapor Shark to bring the price point down a little bit, and meanwhile we've had uh, we've had several products in our pipeline that that we hope will appeal to a wider variety of vapors out there uh, from both a, a a price and a functionality standpoint. Um, you know, we also realize that uh, if this is something, if we want to have a true impact on this industry, then we need to uh, we need to be more efficient at what we do. We need to make it more cost effective, not only from a manufacturing standpoint, but from for shop owners to bring these products into their store. Um, so around the time we uh, we started to to work with Yihi, I had taken a trip over to uh, China, and you know, when in China, you're not just going to waste a trip and meet with with one uh, right. Take with, advantage of it, sure. Manufacturer. So I went and met with a lot of the, the large mod manufacturers to figure out if we could find an ideal partner to take our brand to the next level. Um, and rather than uh, you know, only offering what are, are admittedly uh, products at the much higher end of the, the price range, um, let's, let's see if we can't make something for everyone. All right, so let me understand this. So the, the, the new flask, the flagship flask, okay, right. That's going to offer the uh, the SX board, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, the the new product that we're about to see, all right. So this is with your new partner, correct? Okay, so that that's using their technology. So it's actually modified technology. We are working with um, with Wismeg, which is a lot of people know is a subsidiary of Joytech, yep. uh, which is uh, one of the if not the largest electronic cigarette manufacturer in the world, um, and it's opened up several options for us we've actually been able to take um, bits and pieces of technology that they manufactured for for future products and some of their existing products and customize that to give our brand its own user interface and and, and put our ideal okay our ideal piece of technology into the products that we're making um, I, I i think that what a lot of people don't understand is how difficult it is as a manufacturer to use off-the-shelf third-party technology uh, you know, if we're going to go with Evolve or we're going to go with with Yeehee, um, you know, by and large, you're you're going to find yourself trying to fit it quite literally a square peg into a round hole. Right. Um, right. So um, having the ability to uh, to design a product and then work with with Wismec and the Joytech team to customize the layout of the board, but also the functionality of the board to meet the needs of that particular device okay. has been has been a huge advantage for us. So with the, the WISMEC and the Joytech partnership now, you have a little bit more control over look and feel, size, dimensions. Uh, they're, they're fitting their tech to your specifications and right. your box now, right? That's right. And whereas with the, the SX product, the EHE product, and with the Evolve product, you're kind of like stuck with what they give you, kind of. That's right, and, and, right. and, um, and obviously we've, uh, 
as we've grown as a company, you know, evolve and also he they'll they'll work with you to to customize certain things. Uh, for example, we have a longer ribbon cable here, and and we were also able to achieve 100 watts in parallel uh, because we it was it was a dual battery device. So from a firmware standpoint and from a um, from a component standpoint, we're we're able to customize. Uh, the products, but but as far as the board layout, right, we're still very much stuck with that 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 rectangular footprint. So on, on the the new um, flask, the SX flask, mm -hmm. this is a Yihi product. It is the 350J, but it's been it's somewhat a modified. It's 350J, but it's been modified specifically for for the VF products. Okay, cool, cool. So I, I mean, a long time ago, I said um, I, it was a from the chair, and I was talking about you know devices, and I looked at like. You know, the device is kind of like the computer and the board that goes inside the device, kind of like the processing chip. And when you buy a, a computer from HP, you know, you can tailor it to how you want, right? So if you want a AMD chip in there, you can get an AMD chip. If you want a uh, an Intel chip, you get an Intel chip. And you, you've kind of... You've kind of done that in a way, right? right? I mean, so we've got the uh, the SX flask, and that's going to use the Yihi chip, and that will board. I, I always say chip; it's a board. Um, you've got the um, the flask, the Shark flask out there that's using Evolve, and potentially there there are going to be more products out there using Evolve. Yeah, potentially, absolutely. Okay, uh, and now we have the the new line, and this is going to be um, Joytech and 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 uh, Wizmec, but really to all of your specifications, so people can get that vape forward product but they can get it however they want it that that's exactly correct did i, did I nail that you, you nailed it good no, actually fine. can i can we write that down for our website no well you could copy it later okay. Fantastic. Yeah, of course there's price involved with that but um all right so <laughs> what do we got here what do we got charlie talk to me about the new product so i've seen all this and it's 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 really cool so i think naturally um show them the box show them it's a real box it's a, it's a nice box i mean some people really get into the whole box and packaging thing you know, I mean, back in the day, we're, we're beyond the days where we get uh, mods and bubble wrap or devices that, and bubble wrap. Right? Yeah, that's right. We, we're putting them in real boxes yeah. with real instruction manuals. And and, so, uh, I, I, and because, uh, you know, I mean, although it is, it, it, it's a Chinese manufactured product, but I mean, it is U.S. designed. It's right. We, it's, it's, it's designed, promoted, distributed all through the U.S. And you know, at this point, we 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 like to think of ourselves as Apple and and Wismac as Foxconn. Okay. Um, and and I can tell you the relationship that's a that's evolved between us and and, and the the owners of Joytech over the last um, six months has been been pretty incredible. And and as of recently, we really have started to discuss this as as our project working together. And I think that um, ultimately, if 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 you can rather than just simply having a, a contract manufacturer who's manufacturing your products, if you can basically look and come up with the strategy with that manufacturing partner, then I think ultimately the customer gets a much better product. Okay. And I think uh, I think people will, once they get these products in their hand, they'll very much appreciate that. Yeah, they, they don't feel like inexpensive, mass-marketed product. They Absolutely. They really don't. Okay. Absolutely. So, so let's take a look at the first one here. So the first product... Um, we wanted people to be familiar, obviously. So it'll be the uh, the Vapor Flask Classic. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, 150 watts, um, but in series. Nice. People are gonna like that right there. 150 yep. watts in series. Um, uh, temperature control for nickel, stainless, and uh, what is it? Titanium. Titanium. I guess. Yep. So there, there's the product right there, and this is going to come in. Uh, this is kind of a, we're in prototype phase a little bit with this, uh, right? These are these are production samples. Production so it samples, very much okay. Like this, but there will obviously be modifications. Okay, but um, and the finish, you're going to offer a, a silver, and you said it's going to be a little bit more brushed uh, yeah. than it is here. It'll be a I've got more some close-ups of this for you too. So here it is, and uh, so and and firmware upgradability too, right? Firmware upgradable and. Okay. Um, as far as the features of the board, that that'll be consistent for for the other devices we're about to show. So I don't have to repeat myself. But, okay. Um, so 150 watts, um, and uh, this will hit stores. We're projecting for for slightly over 100 dollars. Slightly over 100 dollars. And when do you see these becoming available? If all goes well, uh, these will hit stores before the holidays. We're we're ta we're talking about a uh, rollout. Um, the uh, the first week in December. 
Okay, and what about the SX flask? The SX flask is is readily available. Uh, we'll actually be posting on our website the list of approved resellers. Okay. Um, and we have uh, the black units are available right now, and we start shipping. I um, like that. That's really sharp. Red units and. Do you have the gray? Um, we do. That one's really nice. Yeah. And I thought since no one has this in their hand yet, we should also probably do a giveaway for this. Fantastic. Yeah, so let's definitely do a giveaway. This is uh, first article number one. So we're going to give that one away tonight? Yeah, let's give that one away tonight. I love it. What if I like that one more than the black one? Then you can give a black one away. No, I won't do that. Yeah. I won't do that. But yeah, that's, that's really sharp. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. All right, let's go to the next product, then we'll figure out how to give that one away. So the next product is something that we've actually had mocked up for... For over a year now, um, but but we we actually we couldn't figure out how how to make this substantially um, smaller to uh, to really give the benefit of, of what I think we've been able to achieve now. And so this is the vapor flask light. Do you want to? Yeah, you, sure. You, you, you want to show that? Show that right there, the vapor flask light. So it does have a little bit of a curve to it. Uh, I will say that it does uh, work much better in the hand uh, than the full size, especially for a uh, left-handed person. Uh, so this is going to have the same uh, interface. I'll go ahead and put a battery in. We can show the interface a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I, now, do you, you need to get your coin to... No, I don't. That? And I, that's like one of the things that I absolutely love about this product. And I'm about to show that. But, um, I mean, this feels solid. This doesn't feel yeah, like absolutely. a cheap piece at all. Right? Absolutely. I mean, we've... we've uh, We've actually, to be perfectly honest, we we uh, we had developed this quite a while ago, but um, in order to manufacture this, it was it was cost prohibitive. Um, in working with Joytech, uh, that's that's not the case anymore. So we're finally able to bring this product to market. Okay, and uh, let's see. Do you have a battery? If not, we could just reach into my one of my drawers here, and we'll just pull the battery out. Now, you know, I I will say though that we still don't have ba battery orientation on these devices, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, you're also looking at a production sample. Right, okay, okay. So, but here's the cool thing, folks, right? So you just take it right here, and you slide it, and you put your battery in. Is it positive down? Positive down. See, I don't know that because there's no battery orientation. Yeah. Okay, right? okay. So you put the battery in, boom, and you're uh, off and running. And there you go, it's lit up now. So, I mean, this is terrific down here at the bottom because I, I you know how I, you know, hate tools and stuff. So, I mean, we have the... Uh, the full size and this one is magnetic yeah, why don't, why don't, and why don't we hold them up next to each other just so we can so so it's roughly half the size sure it's roughly half the size now this will yep. be 75 watts so this one is 75 watts yep. still has temperature control absolutely still does it for nickel for titanium for stainless steel still firmware, firmware upgradable. upgradable absolutely and the price point on this one um, we uh, it will be under a hundred dollars. Under a hundred dollars. Um, our target is between eighty and eighty-five dollars. That point. one's this is terrific. This is a really nice piece. Let's okay. see. So. And it's got a it's got a little bit of a different interface too that I like. You can I'm not going to talk too much about the interface because I don't know how much you want to give away, but um, I can get around here really really easy, and I can do my settings really really easy with this one. So I, that was that was one of the things that we were fairly adamant about. I, I think that a lot of people just go ahead and they take user interfaces for face value. But, um, well, for example, uh, if we like to think about the number of clicks, the fewest clicks is for something that that you're going to do more frequently. So when you're in temperature mode, um, in the home screen, you'll be able to change the temperature. Three clicks actually get you into the wattage menu, so you can change the wattage in temperature mode. One click to get out of it. Right. Five clicks to lock it to switch your mode. It's four clicks. Okay, I feel like the guy on QVC that like demonstrates the product as the guy's talking. Well, about you do it. a very nice hand. Thank you. Yeah, right. So the, and just <laughs> just to show the other variations. So right. So here's is, the black version. Yeah, this is the black version. Yep. And you said that this is probably going to be a little bit more brushed than it is right now. I kind of like it the way it no, looks. No, no, no. So uh, I'm, no that that is actually that that is the production finish on. Oh, the this white. is the production. Okay. Um. The uh. This is. This will be slightly more matte. That'll be a little bit more yep. matte. Okay. All right. And obviously the black one still has the little slidey thing. Yep. And you're not using mag magnets. You're using a ball bearing. No, we actually have a place. ball bearing right there so it registers into place. Okay. Terrific. Spring loaded on the top, right? Correct. Okay. Really cool. I like it. It's just a really positive click into place and no rattle or anything. Really nice, man. Thank you. I really like that. Thank you. And, and I mean, this is... Uh, from an innovation standpoint, we're we're actually really happy with how the how that door uh, 
how that door ended up turning out. And, and this was another thing where, where we had that concept, but couldn't really figure out how we were going to achieve that. And to, to be perfectly honest, our original design actually had magnets, and we were able to work with the WISMEC team to develop a, a more robust closure system, and, and that was with the ball bearing. Cool. Um, so before we go to the next piece, what, what's it actually like working with a Chinese company to, to come up with these products? I mean, is it easy? Is there a language barrier? What, uh, there, how is it? There, there, there's certainly a language barrier, but the, um, I, think, I think design... Uh, it can can be universal. Um, we uh, we handle all um, all top line design, so the exterior of the device, the finishes from a functionality standpoint, um, the the internals uh, from a, from a manufacturing standpoint. That's something that that's being provided by by Wismec and their team. Um, and um, and to be honest, it's it really has been a pleasure working with them. Really smart people over there. They have an engineering team of about 25 or 30 people, all with graduate degrees in, in very specific areas. So from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, they do the board layouts and, 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 and choose the components and, and are in fact uh, manufacturing all of their boards in the U.S. at Texas Instrument, which a lot of people might not know. So designed over there, and then they come back here to get built by TI. Correct. So, with your relationship with with Joytech, like, did you shop other like major manufacturers there? Did you shop Anakin? Did you shop Kanger? Did you talk to Aspire? You know, did you just find your best fit with Joytech? How did that yeah, all? Yeah, absolutely. Work out? So, so not to go any, to any specifics, but yeah, we we met with with um, pretty much all of, of what I, I think a lot of people out there would um, would think of as the major manufacturers and. Um, Let's take Kanger for example. We had had a discussion with them, but at the end of the day, we're we're a company that that focuses more on more on the the mod side of hardware rather than atomizers. So sure. Um, and at that time, they were they were ramping up their production of the sub box. So the question was, you know, did they have from a a mod manufacturing standpoint the bandwidth to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish? Right. Uh, especially given the fact that that we were looking to launch multiple devices with the introduction of, of the vape port concept to the marketplace so we needed a company that um, that controlled their own technology that had the manufacturing capability in uh, in the bandwidth to get done what what we wanted to get done and and joytech was was the the, the clear um, the clear preference in fact we uh, we'd had we'd had meetings over Skype and in and, and, um, and through email and then we we actually went to um, to Beijing for the the uh, Vape China Expo, which was mm -hmm. actually an incredible show. We we think about China being a a manufacturing country, but this was actually this was just like an ECC show or a Vape Expo of Paris. It was, was it? actually geared towards the consumer, and that was something that I just couldn't miss out on seeing. All right, how about the last uh, piece now? So this is a product, and we, we we struggled with the with the name quite a bit because it's it's our first departure from. The uh, the flask shape, um, you know. Back up to the conversation we were having about uh, about ten minutes ago, and, and how we started vapor flask. So it had to fit comfortably in your pocket, fit comfortably in the hand. Right. And and for me, you know, when I spend a hundred plus dollars on an atomizer, I want it to look beautiful on the device. So the twenty two millimeter radius was really really important for us. Right. So uh, the last product. I'll open and, up the other one. And this is honestly, I uh, this is a product that I, I don't I don't feel it has has really hit the mass market yet, uh, at least from a, uh, a regulated device standpoint. Um, it's the Vapor Flask Stout, which is our first twenty six six fifty device. Right, and I've got the uh, the silver one here, and for a twenty six six fifty, this thing fits fantastically in the hand. It really does. So, and what's cool about this, we still have the uh, the battery latch system on this Absolutely. one, right? And it does come with an insert, right? So comes you, insert, so you can either use a, a twenty six six fifty or an eighteen six fifty battery. Right, right. And this one goes a little bit higher in watts. Yeah, that that'll actually go to a hundred watts. This will do with the twenty six six fifty. Correct. Okay. So we're looking at you know forty amp batteries with the twenty six six fifty. Now, obviously, if if you were to put an eighteen six fifty in here. Um, you could still dial it to 100 watts, but you're not going to achieve 100. Okay, so it's going to limit it. Absolutely. The, the device yep. itself is going to protect you mm -hmm. and limit it. And we that's something we didn't talk about, you know, safety features and all these devices. 
I would assume we have reverse battery protection, reverse battery protection. Uh, short circuit protection. We've got low resistance protection. Uh, we have sensors on the board to monitor if it gets too hot, shuts itself down. Absolutely, and, and and there's actually we um, in 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 this device because it is in uh, in series, we actually do have um, we do monitor the charge of the batteries individually. Okay, so balanced charging. Correct. Right. Right. So there's this piece right here, and here's the uh, the black version. And again, I have some close up shots for you guys. Um, and they just they feel terrific, and they feel terrific in the hand if I have the what did you call it the stumpy the stubby the stout the stout I got it both wrong okay yeah, yeah. but it's uh, it's comfortable that way and it really is comfortable this way as well um, just a real comfortable device to hold on to and you're gonna get some you know added battery life with the 2650 26650 right. and you're gonna get some uh, potentially a little bit more uh, wattage out of it too. and the added benefit of not having you bitch about it not being made for left-handed vapors. I still want one of these for for me, okay? Just Christmas just, is around the corner. Just one, okay? You know, when when you first approached me on the Vapor Flask um, review, you were a, kind of, a, for me, you were a little bit of a different beast than other manufacturers who have sent me devices for review. Right. The fact that you're here right now kind of introducing your line and the fact that you got a hold of me, you said you were doing business in there and you wanted to do this, um, says something, you know, about you. Um, you're kind of meticulous. You are, you're kind of, I, I always feel like you're... Um, maybe a little bit stressed, a little bit worried about yeah. what's going on and what you're doing, right? So talk to me about Charlie. What's, you know, so, I mean, tell this, me more about Charlie. This is something that, uh, this is something I've dedicated an immense amount of time and energy to. My team has, has, um, has put an immense amount of time and energy into, um, you know, we, we really ramped, ramped up this company with the DNA 40 and, and obviously there was, there was problems initially with that. Did you have um, a lot of heartache over that? It, it um, it, it, was, it was certainly a learning experience um, growing a company with, um, you know, not only were we had the screen freeze issues and we were also having to educate a market about temperature control and, and being, and that was a battle at that point. Abs I mean, that absolutely. So is, 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 is our customer having difficulty building coils or is there a problem with the board and actually trying to identify those problems and troubleshoot over the phone? It was, it was, it was a constant battle. Right. I think I called it cloudy yeah. with a chance of meatballs. That's, yeah. that's what I called it. Right. And, 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 you know, but honestly, thank God to, to my team around me, um, you know, my sales guy, Jamie and, and, and Preston, um, Preston's our social media guy. And he's, I guess some people might call him big famous, but I think we prided ourselves on our customer service and, um, this is actually, uh, I'll, I'll tell this story, it, it, and it was something I didn't even realize until I actually had this experience, but we were we were at Vape Summit probably a year ago, and um, we had one of our vendors walk up to us, and I had never met the guy before, and came over and introduced himself, and I said, hey man, you know, good to meet you in person, and he, uh, he had this angry look on his face, and he said, uh, and he said, well, you know, I just want you to know I'm not carrying your product anymore, and I was like, well, I was like, is there a problem? Do you want to talk about it? It's like, yeah, we've, you know, I've emailed your your sales guys five times, and no one's getting back to me to fulfill an order. And, um, and this wasn't this wasn't over a text or anything or an email. I didn't really. I mean, this was face to face, which right. um, I, I think we all take for granted. But um, my, my response to him was, look, we have limited resources. We're a growing company, and it's more important for us to concentrate on our existing customers before going out and trying to find new ones. And that's the way that we've operated since day one as we continue to grow as a company. Um, and, and, and even at an exponential rate, I hope that we can continue to do that, um, to buy a product for, for less than $100 and knowing that you have a phone number uh, direct to the company in the U.S. and you can come and talk to us and we can help you figure out your problem, I, I think is a... a a huge added value. So I think that's important to point out too. So even though these these products <clears throat> are are being manufactured in China, okay, they're being distributed from China too. I would assume. Um, well, they'll, they'll obviously be shipped from China, but right. the, the, the difference is, and in, in, uh, a lot of people watching this might not understand exactly how a product gets from the manufacturer into their hands, and uh, by and large, that's through Chinese trading companies yeah. um, like Heavenly Gifts or, or, right. or Health. Those are the, for those of us, you know, who do reviews, and for those of us who have email addresses, those are the companies that spam us every single day. Right. right. So what we've actually done is we've assembled um, a, a team, and, and this actually probably took longer than actually designing the products. 
it was determining who we wanted uh, to distribute this product and it was choosing companies that we thought could best represent our brand you know what, what people don't understand is vapor flask as a company is only three people it's myself and and two other guys now we'll obviously be expanding over the next several months um but we look at 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 the relationships with retail shop owners and, and distributors, we look at those people as extensions of, of our company, people who we can trust representing our product. Okay. Um, with the Chinese distributors, you don't you don't get that. Because if you can go in, uh, and you're uh, a distribution company selling a product that literally every other distributor um, is selling, or you're seeing in every single spam email from, from one of those trading companies in China, then you're not really going to take ownership of that. You're not going to have a sense of pride in selling that product because everyone's selling that product. So we're working with uh, between 11 and 12 distributors throughout the uh, throughout the world who will have basically exclusive rights to the distribution of these products, um, and uh, so we'll have a better control over our, our pricing, um, but also um, better control over. Uh, over the message that we're trying to send and, and the certain things that we're trying to accomplish through this vape coordinate. Okay, and, and that could have better control because a lot of these these Chinese trading companies will sell you replicas and not original, absolutely right. A absolutely, and um, you know, in all of the uh, in all of the boxes, you'll have you'll have a certificate of authenticity and the the security checker. Okay, um, and, you can hold that up a little bit. Huh? Yeah, and, and and that'll be available. Um, You'll actually be able to check that on our website and Wispex website, um, and uh, um, and having that. We'll also we also have a feature on on our new website that we'll be releasing vape forwardcom Okay. Which will allow people to to check and see if the retailer that they're purchasing the device from is uh, is an authorized retailer. So um, as long as those retail shops have have purchased the products through one of our um, or, or, or official distributors throughout the world, then they'll have the ability to register with us um, as the parent company here in the U.S. And that should that should give consumers a uh, a little bit uh, a little bit more comfort when they're going in to make a purchase. Okay. Now, what about um, support and returns? That's all going to be done here in the states. Um, so it, it it would actually be in in the country where you purchased it. And right. Okay. That'll uh, be a uh, a coordinated effort between us and our. Uh, in our exclusive distribution network. Okay, but if you buy it here in the States, returns and support is done here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If we implement this correctly, then we're providing the same level of support to our customers for this product that costs you less than 100 is this product that costs you 200 instead. Good, good, okay, good. So let's uh, let's do the lineup here and let's, um, so we've got the, uh, let's see, we got the, well, this one right here. So this is going to be the, uh, the Vapor Flask SX. Right. It's available out there right now. The price point on this one is two hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Okay, and this one. So, do you have multiple distributors selling? Because I know your first flask was just vape rev, right? Right. No, I mean it'll be um, it'll be in a, a wider a wider range of stores, and um, that'll be available on the new vape vape dash forward dot okay. com website. So the uh, the flask mini. Correct? Vapor Flask Light. Vapor Flask Light. I apologize. Um, so the uh, the Vapor Flask Light and these are going to be available. We hope by the holiday time. Uh, we, we, we hope to, to have these in stores by the first week in December. Okay, and the price point again on these? We're looking at 80 to $85. Okay, and then we have the, um, the Vapor, what are we calling this one? The Vapor Flask? The Vapor Flask Classic. The Classic, okay. And this one, the price point on this one? Uh, it will be slightly over $100. Slightly over 100 and again, we hope to have this available at the holidays? All, all of these will ship at the same time. Okay, and then I'm going to get the name of this one correct this time, the Vapor Flask Stout. And we're looking right? at, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, 90 to $95. Something. 90 to $95 on this one. Um, what about the warranty on, on all of them? What's the warranty on these pieces? Uh, it'll be a 90-day warranty. 90-day warranty, yep. the SX and, and all of the... The SX actually has a six-month warranty. Oh, the SX has yep. a six-month warranty. Okay, so a little bit longer on the SX. So that's cool, man. Yeah. It's, it's been kind of a crazy ride for it, you? It has been a crazy ride in the the last year. We've I think we've this will be the... the just with the SX, that was the first product that we introduced. Um, my my beautiful wife has been unbelievably supportive. I've 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 traveled more than I'd like to admit this year, and we have a, a two and a half year old and a beautiful eight month old boy at home as well. So um, it's uh, it, it's it's been um, 
it's been quite a ride, but um, I've loved it every step of the way. Good deal. Um, and um, a, a huge shout out to to my business partner and 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 more importantly my my team at Vapor Flask or Vape Forward. We should we should start calling it um, yeah. because we honestly wouldn't be here. I mean, I, I was very much involved in creating the first product, but. Um, and you see this on Shark Tank all the time. You have a product, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have a company. Right. Um, and um, I think from a, a brand loyalty standpoint, I, I certainly could not have done it without my team. So Preston and Jamie, love you guys. There you go, Preston awesome. and Jamie. Um, so now i got to ask you this, all right? Uh, pending FDA regulations, doom and gloom, how, how do you feel about that? How could that potentially affect you? Um, what can you say about it? Because so we, we all don't know yet, right? Yeah, Some yeah. of the stuff is leaked and it's kind of ugly, but... Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, um, you know, from from a... Uh, now, this could affect us. We we actually, we will be launching uh, an e-liquid line under under Vape Ford called Vapor Fuel. Okay. You see what we did there? VF again. Yeah, yeah. Vapor Fuel. You see the theme? Yes. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, so... You know, we've we've spoken with with several companies that we could partner up to do that with, and and one of the things uh, in our due diligence that we're that we're looking into is what how have you prepared for the impending FDA regulations? Uh, from a from a hardware standpoint, you know, if if you want to introduce a new product, it could cost several hundred thousand dollars, and uh, um, as an independent company, is that something that that we could afford to do? Um, probably not, but uh, I, I think. That that's another really important aspect of this partnership with Wismec and Joytech. I mean, they are um, one of the, if not biggest companies right. in this game. So if anyone can withstand that, they can. Okay, so good. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a security blanket there for Definitely. you and for your company and for your family too. All right, so we are going to give one of these gray ones away. Correct? Where is it? Where did it go? I know it's. This is this usually happens to me. There, there, it's a very small space in front of me, but things just disappear. There it is. So we'll give away, we'll give away a. Uh, this was the, the very first uh, silver SX flask that cool. was manufactured. Cool. Cool. Um, actually, today, right before I left, uh, so we'll go ahead and give that away. Fantastic. So. Um, we usually do a question. Okay. Okay. So, do you do you have any questions about like maybe Vapor Flask or, or or Vape Forward that maybe you know people might know or we could we could hunt for something that we talked about and use that as a question or or you just come up with one on the fly. See, I'm putting them on the spot. A question again. on the fly. Yeah. All right. So we've come up with a question. This is a good question too because there's a, there's a certain there's a certain uh, luck aspect to the question, right? I, I don't even know the answer to this one. I, w I want to know, though, yeah. eventually. Okay. So go ahead and ask the question. So here's the question. So, so, so the question is, how many iterations of the firing button did we go through before we released the very first Vapor Flask version number one? So uh, so how many iterations of the firing button button, button uh, did they go through before the first Vapor Flask release? The first one, not this one. That's right. Okay. The, the first one, we've actually... We've actually taken that design and, and, and carried that forward on every single version of the class we've ever done. Okay, cool. So, so what you got to do is, uh, in an email address, this is where they get everything wrong. Okay, they have a very hard time understanding this, but we'll do it again, all right? So in an email address to contest at tasterjuice.com, this is where they'll send it to pibasardo at tasterjuice.com because they, they have a hard time. Okay. Uh, in the subject line of the email, this is where they'll put it in the body of the email, right? In the subject line of the email, you will put your first name, your last name, dash. This is where they'll forget to put their first name and their last name. Dash, the answer to the contest question, question which is uh, how many iterations of the firing button did they go through uh, before the release of the very first vapor flask? Okay, now I have to go over here. And I have to see what today's date is. I want to get this video done by the uh, by the end of the week. Uh, so we'll, we'll give this contest till the end of the week. All right. So this one is going to end on uh, Saturday, November 21st at 11.59 Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So that's when you have to get the, uh, the answer in. And uh, we will go ahead and take all the correct answers. Hopefully there will be correct answers. I mean... It's not like some crazy astronomical number, is it? No, no, there should be some correct answer. Okay, good. And whoever got the answer uh, correct 
you will be in the random drawing for the contest. Now, uh, before you think that you're going to go ahead and enter the contest and you're going to say one, you're going to say two, and you're going to say three, and you're going to say four, no, one entry per person, all duplicates get deleted, okay? So don't do that, all right? And try to use numerical values. Don't, like, write T-H-R-E-E -E for three, and it's not three, is it? It's not three. It could be three. But it's not. But it's not, okay. Don't pick three. Right, yeah, uh, if you I, pick three, that... <laughs> I, I think if, if, also, if this is going out Christmas time... This is the Christmas, yeah. I'd like to go ahead and toss one of uh, one of each of these into the... Uh, Come on, seriously? Seriously. Seriously. Very cool. Very so, cool. So that's going to be the stout, that's going to be the, the, um, light. the light, and it's going to be the, the classic. classic. Awesome, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much, Charlie. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. And, and thank, thank you. you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, any closing thoughts, any final words before we wrap this one up? Uh, I guess if, if at the end of this video, um, you know, I thank my wife. I, I, I thank my uh, uh, my team. Uh, but but most importantly, thank you to all of you, because if not for you, we wouldn't we, we wouldn't be here right now. So to all of our loyal fans out there and all of the people that have, have hoped to buy vapor class one day but maybe couldn't afford it or couldn't find it available um a couple of months from now you should have zero problem with that fantastic fantastic so, well i wish you the best of luck with the new you. product line and thanks for coming on and thank talking you. to everybody so uh there you go folks a little bit uh, about uh, vcc tulsa uh a talk here with charlie and uh, a little bit of information about the uh the vapor flask the new vapor flask products and of course the uh the vape forward company and and the way you've structured that kind of a a cool look at, at the inside of it so thanks very much thank you for having me all right you guys i hope you found some of the information helpful as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again soon and how's that for seeing you again soon we still have to announce the uh, the winner of the last contest for the evic vtc mini kit right there um charlie's a cool guy uh, i've known him for a while now and uh, I went out to dinner uh, with him after that interview, and he just talked about Vape Forward, uh, you know, just about customer service and about product quality and about putting his products into uh, people's hands for a lower price point. He seems to really care, okay? So I do wish him the best of luck. And we will be taking a look at the, um, the Flask uh, SX or the SX Flask uh, soon enough here. Um, always hard to keep up with these things, especially these days. All right, but uh, let's announce the uh, the winner of the last contest. What was the question? Where was I going to be? What was the answer? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Let's... Give it away, give it away, give it away now. All right, guys, here we are on random.org. This is a list randomizer. For this contest, 1,588 of you uh, got the answer correct and entered the contest correctly. Good luck, everybody. The winner is... Lynn Bauer, Lynn Bauer, congratulations. You are our big winner tonight. All right, congratulations to you, Lynn Bauer. You're our big winner tonight. What you got yourself is the uh, the Joytech Evic VTC Mini. What you got to do is get a hold of me at pbasardo at tasterjuice.com using the same email address that you entered the contest in so I can verify who you are. I'll get some information from you and get this out in the mail just as soon as I can. Now we're done. Now it's really the end of the video. So as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Can I taste your juice? All right, congratulations to you, Lynn Bauer. You're our big winner tonight. You got the um, the Joytech. Mm -hmm. All right, congratulations to you, Lynn Bauer. You're our big winner tonight. You got yourself the uh, the Joytech. Uh, All right, congratulations to you, Lynn Bauer. You are our big wiener tonight. You got yourself the um, the Joytech EV EV. Holy shit! And when I got done talking to the first guy, I turned to the next guy. I said, "Hey, Phil Basardo," and he says. Hey, Charlie from Vapor Flask. <laughs> so you, you never know uh, when the guy's going to show up. And and you never know when the guy's going to show up. <laughs> totally missed the whole thing. So how many iterations of the firing? See, so you say button correctly. I say button. It's just, no, it's button. Yeah, I know it's button. It's T's. Yeah, I, two, two but T's. I just don't say it that way. I say two, button. It's two T's. It's uh, the way I do it. It's B-U-H dash I-N, button. Okay, so... <laughs> so how many iterations well, we, of the we, we We actually, we went through zero iterations of the button. <laughs> uh -huh. It had to fit comfortably in your hand. Uh, it had to f feel shit. It had to feel shit? No. No. So,